Now, for the calculation, remember that there are, I think there are three or four information you keep the calculator. Okay, and we, we took time to we took time to look at that uh, the some of the information. But what I'm going to do is let, let's let's begin by, by answering some basic questions. What is what is a key? What is a key? People. Yeah, if you have the answer, just maybe raise then or your thoughts. Okay, so that's, it's not always the second to the last number, yeah. right? Yeah. If you look at JPY pairs, the PIP is not the second to the last number on JPY pairs, right? So you've seen some of those things when we start looking at the chart directly. Okay, so um, when, when you want to consider the stop loss, all right, the stop loss is from where to where in terms of um, okay, are you going to calculate the stop loss? I will just tell you the answer if I ask you the question. Okay, so how do you know where your stop loss is? Okay. So, in fact, the thing is, the strategy I gave to you, we are saying that let your stop loss be based on the candle. Some people can take their stop loss based on this entire place, right? And then those, those people usually would now look for a higher target, right? So, but I, I don't do that because there is a lot of money to be made in just few moments. There's no point. With a lot of people who wait, they are usually screen traders. They, they, they use a wider stop and they go for a wider target. Okay, so you can still do it. All right, you can still do it. Some people feel that that's the ideal way. Okay, but uh, sometimes I feel it's better for you to use the candle, the entry candle, and then you know you calculate it from that point. That's what I feel, and that's what I do. Okay. All right. Uh, what what is support? What is support? Yeah. What is support? Yeah, price has reversed several times. Okay. So which of these two is support? The one up or the one down? Down. 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 So this is support. Okay, but um. When when you are referring to the line, right? You now start talking about channel. So both of them together now is in the channel, and then the line itself is called a trend line. Okay. So, but why we call it a support is because the market is respecting that area. So when the market comes there, respects it twice. That's enough. The market gets to a point and goes. Right, it doesn't make any sense. So I'm going, I'm going to teach you today what, how to identify support so that you don't draw one million lines on your chart. Okay, so what to use to identify support? There are, I think, um, three major things that must happen before you can now define that point as a valid support. Okay, so what about resistance? What is, what is resistance? Resistance, where price has reversed. Okay. So this, this, this is, if I bounce a ball like this now, if I bounce a ball, the floor adds as support, and then the roof adds, adds as resistance. That's what support and resistance is. It's like you know, bouncing the ball between the floor and the ceiling. That's that's what happens. And then this, there are several strategies that are based on support and resistance. There are two two ways mainly 
that traders use to to analyze the market and make decisions. Okay, it's either you're doing fundamental analysis or you are doing technical analysis. Fundamental analysis are those people that instead of looking at all these lines and all those things, they study some variables about that economy. Like they look at the reports, the earning reports, something we call NFP, that's non-farm payroll in America, the amount of people that were employed or the amount of people that lost their job. So they gather all these things and then they now use it to know that, okay, these people's economy is good. You get. So, and then when they get all those information, they now say, okay, we expect since these people are still creating more jobs for people, we expect them to have a strong economy. If the central bank is giving people more percentage on their interest, on their money, right? They, they, they expect the economy to be good. So if there is another central bank that is declaring a reduction in the percentage, they believe that the economy is not able to meet up. Is it not? So you know that, okay, this economy is bad, this one is strong. So they trade against it. The problem with that kind of analysis is that there is usually no, there's no, there's usually no specific point. You know the way we can come here and put our stop loss here and put our entry here. We can only do it because we're doing technical analysis. Somebody who is doing fundamental analysis, there's no price, right? There is no specific. The only thing you know is that maybe euro is weak or strong. Right, you know that okay, in the next couple of weeks or months, this particular currency will be weak or strong. Then you make your judgment based on that. So you just open a trade and then maybe use a wide stop loss. I don't know if it makes sense to you. So that's one way to analyze the market. The other way is what we are doing. There are three principles of technical analysis. You can take note. The three principles of technical analysis, number one is that prices moves in trend. All, on all, no matter how the economy is, the price must move in trends. It could be uptrend, it could be downtrend, it could stall for some time, but eventually it will move. If there, there, there's a trading range in a particular time frame, if you change it, to another time frame, you can see a clean trend. Do you get? The prices moves in trends. That's that's the, the number one principle of technical analysis. And then what that means is, if is a principle that price must move in trend, it means that I don't need fundamental analysis to play streets. I can just go into the market and look for a trend. Is it not? That's what it means. So all technical analysts believe that the price must move in trends. Okay, there is no, there is no, um, there's no way, there's nothing that will happen. Even if, and then what causes prices to move in trend? Is the economy, one is strong, one is weak. It will make trends to occur. It might not occur in all the charts at the same time. Right? But there will be, if I have, if I have a trend like this, market moving, um, you know, in an uptrend like this, this is a simple trend. And then I told you how to identify a trend yesterday. Okay, so once you have, you know, rising bottoms, you have an uptrend. Once you have falling tops, you have a downtrend. Now, even if this price is not, is not moving in a trend, right, is in a range. It won't stay this way forever to so move in trends later. Am I right? Now, but if, if you if you still want to trade on this time frame and you narrow down, you come and then you are you are now looking at just this area. Let's say this is um, daily time frame. Okay, if you come to 
let's say five means, do you agree that just here would be represented as something like this? From here to here. So prices will always move in trends. That's the first principle. The next principle is that all data, every data, every information is reflected on the price chart. Every, every information, both economy, Donald Trump talking, every information is reflected on any price chart. If Donald Trump says something that is bullish, when I say bullish, I mean in favor of, you know what the bulls are, you know how they cow, you know how they, they behave, they will raise, raise you up with, uh, with the horn, right? That's why we say the market is bullish when it's going up. And then you know the bears, they use their power, right? To drag you down, is it not? Yes. Uh -huh. So when the market is bearish, it means that the market is falling. If BTC right now is bullish, it's rising. Later it might be bearish when it starts to drop. Okay, so take note of that. All right. So all the information is reflected on the price chart. So even if, uh, let's say, um, there is crisis in Japan, you see Japanese yen falling. I don't need to travel to Japan to know that there's crisis, right? You see it on the chart. When crude fell, I didn't need to, I was watching the chart when it started. I made a lot of money that day. I was, it just, it just started. There was no news, no information. It just started falling. It just started falling. It fell from $37 per barrel to minus $1 per barrel. That was the day I was telling you that one barrel of crude oil was worth less than one tissue paper. Right? So crude had issues. People were at home. They were not moving around. There was global lockdown. Is it not? Yeah. So if you're not using fuel, it means that the value will drop. That's what happened. I mean, it reflected on the chart immediately. Drop it. Right? And then as they started to ease the lockdown, it started to increase. You look at the price of food now, it's about $35 per barrel. Okay, it starts to rise. All right, so the point I'm trying to make is that every information reflects on your chart. Okay, everything reflects on your chart. And then the last one is that history repeats itself. That's why our trading plan will work over and over. History repeats itself is that they are saying that if the market has gotten to this point once and twice, traders are waiting for the market to come back to this point again. Because the history that is repeating itself here is there is a reversal from this point. There is another reversal from this point. They expect it to repeat itself. Those are the three principles of technical analysis. Okay, all the information reflects on the chart. Prices moves in trend. We can only make money when there is a trend. The market stays like this, you, you place a buy order here, it goes up, comes down, goes up, comes down. You, you won't make any money. You only make money when it starts to rise. So we need it to rise. And then there is a principle that it must rise. So it means that technical analysis can work. And then technical analysis makes helps us to generate more money in a short time. If I'm waiting for US election, it means that maybe throughout this month, I'm not going to place any trade until the outcome of the election, is it not? So, but I don't need that. Yesterday you were watching the chart and it was moving. And then we use a simple technical analysis, you know, um, you know, just a simple technical analysis to make a, a judgment, to place a trade. And then what I'm trying to say is, in as much as um, all this is true, it doesn't happen 
100% of the time. Because the factors that affect this thing is too much. Initially, there was no technical analysis. If you talk about technical analysis, it looks as if you are telling us now to use fundamental analysis. It doesn't make sense. Some people look at it and say, how can you look at the chart and then you are looking at the chart and making decisions based on the chart. But that's what we're doing today. And it helps us to generate more money. Okay. All right. So what, what I'm saying here is, uh, I think what brought us to this was that the question of support and resistance. So what you are seeing here is resistance. Okay, this is resistance. The, the repetition that it has gotten here reversed. That, but this is as, as simple as saying, if the price of Coke gets to 150, it will reverse down. Or if something happens, it gets to 200, it will reverse down. It gets to 200, it will reverse down. Some people will now place what we call limit order. Yesterday, you saw sell stop and buy stop, right? There was also sell limit and buy limit. Buy limit are the people that will say, okay, the price is still down. It's going up gradually. Assuming this red line is 200 naira price for Coke, they are, they are saying that if the price gets to 200 naira, I want to sell. So if, if, you're, if you want the, the market to carry you, just like it did yesterday, you place a pending order, which is a buy or sell stop. Now, but if you want to buy this Coke at 200 naira, when the price is still at maybe 160, you will place a limit order. So you place a limit order at that price, telling the market that if you move up to the point where you get to 200, trigger a sell for me. Because I believe the price will start to depreciate from there. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? So that, that's, those are the two orders that you have. You can either use, I, I don't use a market order. And please don't use it. You need to have stayed for at least one year to be able to make to, to place market using market order. Market order is saying that you did not predefine your risk. You just you just bought directly. You didn't calculate your risk, which is bad. If you do that, you are not a trader. So the, the two kinds of orders that you must use is either a limit order or a pending order. Why you should use a limit order it depends on the strategy. The strategy we have so far are pending orders. You, because you need to see the candle, right? You need to see the candle and place a pending order. But if, if you have a strategy that says that, okay, there is a line and we're waiting for this line, but we want to take a limit order. I take limit order on Asian session because the market always traps people. And then the market goes to take a lot of stops. Institutional traders cannot start moving unless they have trapped traders. So they force the price to a certain level before they reverse and go. Usually, when you come to the Asian session, okay, now look at what I do. I'm going to be showing you a lot of things. After the workshop, those of you who are around can always come to the office, okay, from Tuesday, right? From Tuesday, we're going to have Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays. Tuesdays, Thursday, and Fridays. Okay, so yeah. Tuesday, Thursday, and Fridays. Um, Thursday, we have all day because our Thursdays are free. Okay, but Tuesdays will start by 2 o'clock. Okay, 2 o'clock, Tuesday, 2 o'clock, Friday. So I'll be there, all right? But then you can always come out with your computer to sit down there at the office. I think there's light and then uh, I'm there as well. Okay, so if you have any question, you can meet me when I'm there, all right? Because like I told you, you cannot learn everything at once. Okay, so it's a progressive thing. And then what I will do is every day I will take up one topic, okay, to teach you, or I will present you with a strategy. Okay, so I'll give you a strategy or I'll teach you a particular topic. If I'm teaching you support and resistance, 
I will now go into details. How to know a valid support or resistance. And then when it has met the criteria of being a valid support or resistance, how you can place a trade from that point. Okay. So I will take all these things as we make progress. And then what we'll do also is to stream live. All right, for those that cannot come down. So we stream live and then they will follow us. Okay. All right, so um, yeah, I believe you understand what I'm trying to show you here. Okay, uh, this, is, this is everything about technical analysis. We make decisions based on technical analysis and it works. There are some people that think that technical analysis doesn't work. Okay, um, I would like to show them some of my traits, right? When you see patterns that play out, you know that technical analysis actually works. What drives the market is traders. If there is a general consensus, if there is an agreement that this is a valid level to sell from, it might, the market might act very funny here. Take away stops, take a lot of time to reverse, but it will eventually reverse. Okay. So uh, the thing about this whole thing is following a trading plan. Follow a simple trading plan, all right? So let me give you some uh, information that should be contained in your trading plan, all right? You need a trading plan. And then when you have, when you have a trading plan, what you should focus on next when you have a trading plan is recognizing the setup, all right? And how you do it is do a back test. I'm going to do a, a, a back test of the, the, the ones I'm going to give you now. We will do a back test, a simple back test that will, that will show you how this trade has behaved or this set of works in the past and then you can in a chat and it played out like this technical analysis believes that it will happen like this again and again and again no so what do we do we risk little to find out that's all that's what technical analysis is about The basis of everything you're doing is to manage risk. When you define yourself as a, they don't do it. They don't even understand it. Because I see no reason why you're going to take your hard-earned money and take an odd that is against you. So people take 100 Naira and they try, they take an odd that can generate 25 million Naira. It cannot work now. It cannot work. It's an odd. You know what odd means? Improbability. It's an odd. It can't work. Okay, because and then when you accumulate it, there are several factors that can that will make it not to work. If it works, if it ever works, is just a gift. Is is a supernatural gift. It's not because you are smart or because you analyze it well. There is an odd, it can never work. It is always in favor of the other person because the other person doesn't have the odd. It is you that have the odd. The other person has the money you put in, but you have the odd and you have given out your money. So it doesn't work. Okay, and uh, it gives false hope because when you do, you think it's gonna work. Okay, and I, I know why I'm telling you this because sometimes you might find yourself bringing in these habits into the market. It's very easy. It's very easy. You think that, okay, let me just deposit $100 and see uh, if I can take a trade that can double or triple this thing quick. 
it's not good. It's the wrong way to do it. There's no, there's no point in rushing because you will lose the money and by the end of the month, you will not have your profit, you will not have your capital. So the best thing to do is trade right and then manage the profit you are making. I'm telling you emphatically, you can never outsmart this market. Even if you double your account now, you can lose it all the next day. And the, the, the downside or the problem with having these bad habits is if, if, it's, if it works out once, your mind starts to fall in love with the idea because it will work out. Anything that gives you a dime, you, you naturally gravitate towards that thing. So if you, if you do this for once and you make a lot of money, you, you continue doing it, believing that one day it will work out. And you, you can spend several years as a trader with nothing to show for it. So I'm just telling you again that there is no point trying to, you know, come into the market. You're doing technical analysis. Technical analysis is not 100%. That's what all of these things are. It's not 100 I told you the right thing to even do is fundamental analysis. But we can't do it. If I know that an economy is terrible, I know that in a space of one year, this country will not do well. You place the trade and go, right? That's, that's what fundamental analysis is. Now, but when you now come to technical analysis, you, 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 there is, you are looking at the charts. These things are almost mathematical. I don't know if it makes sense to you. It's almost, it's an analysis. It's just, you are just saying, okay, this thing happened several times. It will happen again. That's what you are saying. There's no guarantee that it will happen. But a lot of traders want that assurance that it will happen, but it doesn't work that way. If you want the assurance that it will happen, it means that you have to wait for as much as like one year. Do you get the point now? So uh, don't, I, I, I'm always saying it because it's very important to me. Because I've seen a lot of traders, I've watched them trade. Don't think you can outsmart the market. You can't. You can't. Just look for something that you'll be looking out for. The market is very noisy. All you just need to do is sing, just look for one thing. Another person might be doing another thing. If it works for them, no problem. But you look for just one thing that you need to tell yourself that, okay, this thing has happened. So let me place my own trade. If it works out fine, if it doesn't work out, you move to the next trade. That's the only way I have seen that money is made in this market. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah, let me let me give you a simple trading plan. Now, what, what are the um what are the elements or what are the things that constitute a trading plan? If you're if you're going to have a trading plan, I want to see um for trading plan, we're not talking about your strategy, right? Strategy we are saying what is that thing that you want to see to place a trade. Okay, so if it's a plan, we have to arrange it properly. We have to say, okay, what market are we looking at? All right. So you, we want to ask, we want to answer the question, uh, what market are we trading? All right. So are you trading currencies? Are you trading um, commodities? What are you trading? All right. So, and then uh, on what time frames? All right. What time frame are you looking to place the trades? All right. Would there be any indicator? Okay, are you looking for anything to enhance your, your trade? Would there be any indicator on your chart? Okay, what are you looking for? All right, if there are no indicators, are you going to be using trend lines or support and resistance? Okay, or fractals or auxilators? All right, what are you going to be using? 
And then when you are taking care of that part, you now want to have um, simple rules for, for entry, right? Okay, you want to have simple rules for exit also. Okay, and then also you want to have simple rules for trade management. Okay, or target is a simple procedure. Okay, how you want to manage your trade or how you want to exit the trade. Uh, sorry, uh, when, I, when, I, when I said exit here, yeah. you know, there are two kinds of exit. The exit can be the stop loss or the profit, right? And here, so when I when I said exit here, yeah, I meant uh, stop the stop loss, okay? So that we differentiate because these two are almost the same as exit. So either you are exiting, if you're if you're talking about your trade management, you're calculating, okay, this is how I want to exit the trade, all right? So these are the things that you will be doing because I'm going to be teaching a lot of um, TAs, a lot actually, so that, I mean, in a space of uh, between now and December, when you look at any chart, you should be able to tell yourself, okay, this chart is going up. Usually if I look at the chart, I can tell you it's going up or it's going down. When is any bank called me that time? Okay, the white man was there, he opened the chart, or they massive project over there and then uh it was i was calling my son in somehow you know so i still answered him because i was looking for a job you know so he now asked me where where i should take a look at the chart now where what can i say about the chart where is he going to okay it was a one minute chart you know what one minute chart is it means that uh, every one minute you get uh, okay so i told you sir that it, i am i am that i'm not just going to tell you that the next car the next the market is going up i'm telling you emphatically that the next three bars will be green bars that's how good i am so you continue the market and how did i know there was an exhaustion bar there was an exhaustion bar to the downside so I knew the market had momentum. Did you see the way the market was moving yesterday? When we were trying to place a trade, we couldn't place the trade. A lot of people are countering that trade, but we know that all the bars will be green. At least the next two, three bars will be green. You know, so when he put that in, I told him, okay, the next bars are going to be like this. And then we stayed as, you know, he started playing it. And then oh, well, the bar was red. For like till the last minute, just went back home. And oh, my heart just <laughs> went back. <laughs> you know, so and then it was going off. All right, so it's, it's, a, it's a very simple thing. All right. When you learn a lot of technical analysis, the only problem is that you now become an enemy of yourself. Because this is just, see, to make money is simple. If you can define all this information, you have a trading plan. Now, remember that a trading plan only makes up 10% of the information you need to be successful. Meaning that there is a 90% you need to work on, is it not? Yes. There's a 90%, this is simple. That's why it's 10%. I gave you one yesterday, very easy. This is the one I showed you now, the one I wiped. It might go to resistance, you can sell from there. This thing is not, is not important. This is what a lot of traders spend all their time on. And that's why they remain, you know, on that 95% that continues to lose. Because they are looking for a 10% success. Now, even if they get a, a trading strategy that is 9% or that is very good and then they meet up this 10%, there is a 90%, is it not? There is a, remember I told you, there is a 30% that goes towards Risk management, money management, is it not? What's the solution? The single solution to risk management, use 2%, max. And don't open more than 6% at any given time. That's what they always tell us. If you're, if you're taking 2%, now the, the reason for that is there's something called margin. There is a margin, there is, there is a limit you can withstand 
And then the market has different conditions. And then there is something called self-awareness. If we, if we say, okay, the right thing to do if you're managing your risk is use 2% per trade, all right? And don't uh, exceed, you know, three trades at once, right? Simple English, all right? So it means that at every point in time, you should have a maximum of uh, 6% exposed, is it not? Maximum of 6% of your account exposed at every point in time. Let it know exit. See, I don't use, I don't use up to 6%, I can't try it. I don't use up to 6%. Okay, you take 0 0.75 per trade and you have, let's say, four trades. That's how much? Roughly 3% max exposed on four trades. So we, we are just saying don't exceed this because a lot of us might be operating with little capital. 6% max, that is going to take care of money management. This is a money management topic. This is a summary of a full course. 2% per trade, three trades, max. Now, let me tell you the reason why you shouldn't exceed three trades. Market moves in cycles. There is, it goes, it goes through an uptrend, then it goes, it enters a trading range. When it enters a trading range, it reverses to a downtrend. Now, it can reverse and become an uptrend after the next trading range, or it will, it will halt for a while. Look at what I'm talking about. Market can be in an uptrend, and then after some time it will range, and then uh, it will become a downtrend, and then it will, it will enter a trading range. When it enters the trading range, if these people are still strong, it will resume, right? It will resume the downtrend. But if they are not, it will enter a trading range and then reverse back up. If you look at your, your chart, you see something like this. That's what happens over and over again. So you might be you might be doing this if you're open if your opening is as much as six percent and your trade works very well when is a trading range. It's only safe that you didn't expose, you didn't take two percent in 20 places. I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. Because if you take 20% in 20 places, you might be in an unfavorable condition. And it means that majority of your trades will be bad. And you have a drawdown. Drawdown to recovery is crazy. If you have a drawdown of 5%, you can recover. If you have a 5% profit, 5.26% profit, you recover your capital. If you have a drawdown of, of 10%, you don't, you, if you get a 10% profit, you have not recovered. You need an 11% profit to recover. I mean, what I'm saying is, if you have 10,000 Naira in your account and you lose 1,000 Naira, which is 10%, if you make a gain of 10% of 9K, which is left, right? A gain of 9K will not give you 10,000 again. So you need 11% to recover. Is it not? If you have a 20%, what you have now is 8K. You have lost 2,000. If you make 20% on 8K, you have 16, is it not? You have not gotten 10,000. To make 10,000, you need a gain of 25%. Are you seeing drawdown to recovery ratio now? So you need to avoid loss as much as you can. What about a 50% loss? If you reduce this account to 5,000 Naira, half of your account size, you have $100, you, you, now, you now have $50. You need 100% to recover that money. 
If you have 5,000 here, 50% loss, now 5,000. But 50% gain will not give you 10,000. You need to double 50, uh, that 5,000 to get 10,000, is it not? Which is 100%. So if you get, you need to avoid drawdown as much as possible. That's the essence of these, these three trades. Because if you find yourself in a drawdown, you, 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 you are already in a hole. And then the irony or the paradox is when you have a drawdown, you need to reduce your lot size. I, do you get what I'm saying now? Because now you have how much? 5,000. Your 2% is smaller. If initially your 2% was 200, at 5,000, your 2% is now how much? 100. Am I right? That's the paradox. You're trying to make 100%, but now you are, you are forced to use a smaller size. What do traders do? What do they do? They use a higher size. They are now using 400 per trade because they want to recover. Is it not? It's a technical analysis. There's no assurance that that 400 is now going to start having winning trades. You blow the account. That's what happens. A lot of people have blown several accounts. Okay. So you now start to see why these ones have bigger percentage than this, right? This is more important than the strategy. I can design a strategy now. I, I can even call this thing 2% and give this guy 38%. It's more important. The, look, at it looks easy. It's difficult to, exec to, it's difficult to execute this thing. You know? You have not started trading. Have you seen profit? You will sit down and you see profit. You will increase this thing. That is the problem. I think is I'm saying it now. It looks like it's, it's difficult. That's what makes you a good trader. Executing this thing is very difficult. You need to have. Many of us are young. You need to have children at home that you know that you are going to feed before you, 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 take, you, you execute this thing correctly. It takes a high level of discipline to execute this. But this is where the money is. You make more money when you manage your risk. You lose money when you don't. But greed will not allow you to. Impatience will not allow you to. Right? Last one is 60%, uh, which is training psychology, right? Training psychology. This one is a whole test group on its own. I will encourage you to go to that um, City Forest Resource Group and pick up books and just start reading. There, there is a training psychology by Mark Douglas. It's a video, right? You can um, watch it. It's a live seminar. It just, um, I think there are four sections. Each section is about 40 minutes, right? You can watch it, okay? Because you need to understand some things from the back. Trading psychology is what helps you to execute this. Trading psychology is, is that thing I've been teaching you all this while, thinking in probabilities. It's difficult to think in probabilities. It's difficult, okay? It's difficult. That's what, okay? So you, you call it probability thinking. That's all, this is the one solution to it. One solution to this guy is everything you are seeing here, a trading plan, okay? One solution is a trading plan. If you have a trading plan, you, you have the 10%. If you execute your trades with just 2% per trade and you don't take more than three trades on any single trade, you are taking care of this 30%. You are increasing your chances of success. This will give you 30% success. This will give you 10% success. I put it to you that a lot of traders don't have a trading plan. A lot of traders 
have been trading for several years. They find it difficult to take a plan. Many of us don't even have a plan for our lives. So having a trading plan is, I mean, doesn't make sense. We take whatever comes. It takes extra discipline to take out 30 minutes of your time to design a plan. It takes extra discipline to take out a whole day to sit down to plan your year. It takes discipline. Somewhere in our head, we want to do it, but we never do it. Somewhere in our head, we feel like one day we'll have time to sit down and plan, but we don't get to do it. Traders believe that uh, there is something they are doing in the market, but this lack of plan makes them to have varieties of information. You see, you start to learn a lot of things, and you begin to want to make decisions based on all these things you have learned, right? It will now make you not to have a trading plan. Because you are trying to pick information from here to, to, to determine your stock. You are trying to pick information from here to determine your entry. You are trying to pick information from here to determine uh, how you manage the trade. All these things will stop you from having a trading plan. And then what you realize at the end of the day is that you don't have this 20%, this 10%. And then if you don't have this 10%, you can't even have any other percent. Because you need a plan that you want to execute 2% of each time. You need a plan that you have to follow with discipline and execute with a mind of uncertainty. And then I believe I've said so much about probability so far, right? I have. One word is usually enough. Why we go over these things again and again and we keep on repeating it is because sometimes you need to hear it i myself i need to hear it i've read trading in the zone several times i have the audio book sometimes i just keep it in my office there and i play it with my bluetooth i know all these things but i still have to hear it that repetition is the say repetition is the mother of what mastery is it not i have to keep on repeating the only obligation of a trader is to focus on perfect execution of his trading plan. That's the only, your job. If you want to start making money, your job is to execute your trading plan perfectly. You are not interested in the outcome. It might be good, it might be bad. Yesterday was good, Abi. It might be good, it might be bad. If we place... If we, we had our first trade yesterday and it hit target, okay, we have many other trades. But I want to tell you something, guys. It's possible that yesterday's trade didn't come out favorable. Is it not? Yes. It's very possible. Okay. Now, but it's also possible that many trades will come out favorable. It's possible. This ability to think in probabilities is what gives you this 60%. When you stop thinking in probability, you become an amateur. The day you feel like you are bigger than the market, you know everything that the market does. You know where the market is going. You increase this. What, what would drive you to increase this? You know where the market is going, right? That's why. That's the only reason. If not, you will not, you will not increase it. The only reason why you, instead of you risking 200 Naira per trade, you try to risk 1,000 Naira per trade is because some guru have told you, or you have looked at the chart and then you now say, okay, I know that this market is going up. So you increase your lot size. And then what, you get a drawdown. When you get a drawdown, what? You start to struggle, you start to panic. You stop managing your risk. Not trading is trading. Not placing a trade is also trading. Another reason why you should not increase more than, you should not take more than three trades is, is self-awareness. Golf traders will tell you more about self-awareness. A full consciousness of yourself. Self-awareness to make sure that everything is checked. Self-awareness is 
your mind and body is present. If my woman makes me angry, I don't trade because I won't trade well. I need to check the box for self-awareness. Self-awareness is, hey, we are ready to kick ass. You are present. You are physically and mentally present. If you are struggling with self-awareness, some people go as far as doing, um, what's it called? Um, meditation. This, this is serious business. You need your self-awareness. Now, what if your self-awareness is not balanced and you are trading and you have 720 trades open? What happens? You will lose all of them. And you start to struggle with drawdown. If your trade doesn't work out today, it could work out tomorrow. If it doesn't work out tomorrow, it might work out the next. If you have a good trading strategy, there are some times that you catch a good trend. If you're, if you're taking a reversal trade, reversal trades are usually the beginning of a new trend. One trade can fetch you the profit of all the money that you have lost. So if you look at it very well, when you follow this method of probability, you make money. Okay, so these are the things that we need for a trading plan. I'm going to, I'm going to give you a simple trading plan now, and then we're going to see, uh, look at the charts, look for it, and then identify it. Okay, so we scroll back and then start coming forward gradually and then identifying the trading, uh, trading plan. And then we'll see how it has played out. And then you go and do what we call forward test. You, know, you forward test it on your demo account. You keep on testing it until you are sure that this thing works like this. Remember, don't go looking for trading strategy. There is no perfect one. I give it, I can, there are some people that will give you a trading strategy based on moving average. They will tell you anytime the market bounces on the, comes back to that move. You know what moving average is, right? The, the, the one that moves with the chart. You know, that moving average. Some people will tell you that when the market comes to the, approaches the moving average, you should, you should place the, an order to buy. It's a strategy. Will it work? Yes. It will work. The only thing that will not work is you executing correctly. You might have waited for so long to get this thing here. So when it comes, you won't use 2%. You want to use as much as 1,000. Am I right? So that's why I said I will show you several strategies. There is always a reason to buy and sell on the chart. Buyers are making money. Sellers are making money. It all depends on how you manage your trade. At every point in time, if the market is going up like this, buyers and sellers are making money. If you manage your trade well, if the market is moving up and down like this, and I place a buy and I took my, my profit at twice the, the target, I, I made money here. If a seller comes and there's a line here and there's a poke, and he sells from that point. He will make money if he takes two times the size of his bar. Is he not? Yes. So in all, if buyers and sellers make money every point in time. The market is always sitting in such a way that you look, it looks like you should buy and it looks like you should sell. In, at, at hindsight, everything looks easy. When I do a back test now, it will look very simple. When there is a chart, a guru will open a chart and tell you this is this, 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 look at it as moved and move. In real time, it's not. Right? In real time, as the bars are forming, making a decision is not easy. Many of you saw yesterday how the market was moving. Somebody was already shouting that, hey, see money moving. That's, that's what we are talking about here. You need discipline. You need discipline. 
if I, 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 don't, I don't chase, the first thing I took care of very easily was chasing a trade. And what helped me was, I told myself that opportunities does not finish. Whether you're in the market or not, opportunities will continue to show up forever and ever. So why are you chasing it? If I, if, I, if I get there and it has formed and it has started, I will just go away. I don't try to chase it. The only thing I can do is, if I enter there and it, it starts to move, what I will now do is, maybe I'm already in it, I will allow it to go, see how far it goes. And then as it's going, I'm taking out my profit until I have the least amount open. Then I'll just see what happens. Okay. Now, um, we, we, for our trading strategy, let's, let's trade currencies only. All right, when I say currencies, uh, please, um, the major and minor pairs only. Major and minor pairs. There are 28 of them. Okay, there are 28 pairs. Let's connect this thing so that I can show you what my chart looks like. I have all those 28 pairs at once on the grid, right? I have all of them at once on the grid. Okay, so what I let me let me tell you what I normally do. You know, I told you that the market moves in in cycles like this. In, different sizes. Sometimes you have a, a trading range, you have an uptrend, you have a downtrend, trading range, uptrend, like that. Now, there is a way you can, you can know where the trend is. There's a way you can know what market or what pairs have the trend, have strong trends. Okay, it's, it's correlation. By doing a simple correlation, you can tell where this, 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 the, the trend is strongest. All right? There are three kinds of trend. All the trends will not be sweet like this, you know? There's a strong trend. There are trends that there's almost no pullback. It's just going, it's strong. If you place a 20 moving average on it, it's testing a 20 moving average. That's a strong trend. What I mean by testing the 20 moving average is, is touching a, a 20 moving average is pulling back to a 20 moving average. If the, if the chart is pulling back, you know what pullback is, right? It's generally going up. So it's having small, small, it's resting, it's like it's breathing. You need to take a breath, you know, and then continue. Relax, continue, relax, continue. So if, it's, if it gets to the 20 moving average and goes up again, gets there again and goes up, that's a strong trend. Very simple way to know that the trend is strong. Is either the trend is strong or the trend is healthy. A healthy trend will usually test a 50 moving average. I'm giving you very deep information that you might not find anywhere. Okay, if you look at the, a 50 MA, if the price is coming, if you plot a 50 MA on your chart and the price is coming back to touch it, and then it's going, it's touching it, and then it's going, it's touching it, it's going. Usually it is also respecting support and resistance. Because usually support turns to, support often turns to resistance. See, what, I, what I'm saying in layman's term, if you're not understanding, just be keeping it in your head. Very soon, all these things will make sense to you, okay? What I'm saying is, if, the, if this is my moving average and the market is, is testing 20 MA, if this moving average is, if this moving average is, this are not even 20, it's 50, it's not steep enough. A 20 MA would be like this on a strong trend. You see that the pullback is, almost small, you know, right? Small pullbacks. This is a 20 moving average. 
20 MA, right? Now, you know that this trend is what? It's strong. This one is a 50 moving average. I'm going to show you now on the chart. That's a 50 MA. The 50 MA, what you will always observe is that some of the characteristics of uh, support and resistance is that support turns to resistance. Resistance turns to support, right? That's some of the characteristics. Now, if this is support, over here it is resistance, right? It's resistance here. But it has become support here. Is it not? So resistance turns to support. That's what is happening here again and here. Now, this is what you observe if you have a 20 moving average on your chart. Okay, you see that it's also following support and resistance. So traders buy and sell with this decision. They want to see the market on a 20 moving average. They want to see the market on reversing from um, an area of um, support or resistance. And then they, they observe if the candles are uh, okay for them to move. I like to see an indecision candle followed by a shave bar. A shave bar is a bar that is showing strength. Where the market, the high of the market is where it eventually closed. So, you know, it moves from that point, right? So, yeah, you can make a decision based on that. This is a simple strategy I just gave you. This is 10%, you can use it to trade. That's what I was telling you before I got to this point. I told you that some people will just use the 20 moving average to place their trades. They make decisions based on what the 20 moving average is doing. Okay, so you, it doesn't have to be complex. As a matter of fact, if your trading plan is too complex, it's also a, a reason for failure. Some people have very complicated trading plans. You make a trading plan very complex. Usually, usually you might not succeed. Okay, if the trading plan is too complex, usually you won't succeed. Okay, um, I want us to look at the chart. What I'm through with what I'm showing you over there. See, we are in all the currency pairs.
There are 28 of them. This is one, two, three. I have seven like this, and then four like this. So for those that have computers, you can you can do it like this. But if you don't have a computer, you don't it means you can't achieve this. You have to use your your phone and then go over all of them one after the other. Okay, now this is a very important thing to do. If you do this, you're going to see, you're going to have a general overview of the market. You will know where you know where there is strength and where there is weakness. This is my own cheat for fundamental analysis. Instead of going to the economy and looking at the economic variables that will determine which economy is weak and which one is strong, I'm going to use a, a high time frame and then observe where the market is going to. Take, take this information, it's very important. Now, let me, let me explain the principle behind what you are looking at. If I open the chart and I see that this is Euro USD, USD is pushing Euro down, right? And this is, okay, let me change this time frame. Most of them are in the trading range. So that you will understand what I'm saying quickly. Let me just change to... Okay. This one will help us. Okay, now see, see the point I'm trying to make. It first, this is daily time frame of all the charts. Now, everybody here is USD, right? So fortunately that their projector here is not good. Everybody here is USD. This is USD JPY. This is USD CHF. This is USD, this is USD cash, this is USD CHF, this is USD NZD, this is USD AUD, this is GDP USD, and this is Euro USD. Is that okay? Now, from here to here, there are seven charts for the eight major pairs. Is that okay? USD, Euro, and then all the other ones, right? Now, see what I do. When I come here, you see that there's an uptrend, Abi. There's an uptrend. There's also an uptrend. This is Euro US. It means that US is weak. Is it not? Euro, Euro is pushing US up. It means that US is not strong. So I don't need to go to America to know what's happening in the economy. If I find out that Euro USD is buying. GDP USD is buying same weakness. Abi, yes. this is um, AUD USD. AUD USD is also buying. Right? So I cannot say it's buying. Let's leave it as a trading range for now until we start to see a progressive downtrend. Is it not? This is a, this is a clean downtrend. Now, but this is USD card. USD card being in a downtrend shows that that card is stronger. Is it not? Does it make sense? See, this is, this is Euro USD. Euro is base. Is it not? Euro is base. This is USD card. Card is what? Quote. USD is now what? Base. So if the chart is saying that there's a downtrend, who is strong? Card. Card is strong. Card is pushing the USD down. Is it not? Now, on this chart again, this is USD CHF. USD is also base. So it means that chart is stronger, is it not? Yeah. So, chest is pushing USD down. 
This is US the JPY. Is what? Almost flat. So this is what? Trading range. Is it not? I want you to understand something from what I'm showing you right now. See? If I open my chart, it will be end of And on this chart is that, you know, from here, I'm seeing USD. Now, see the way I do it. I call it matrix system. It's a simple number. I generate numbers for them. That's the best way. When I come here, USD is weak. So I will give euro plus one. And give you minus one. Do you get? The plus one means that Euro is having a positive number here on this chart. And USD is having a negative number on this chart. Do you get? Now, in a case like this, I'm going to give you zero, zero. You know why? Then it is a training range. So let me tell you what now starts to happen by the time I go over all these charts. On euro, on, on all USD pairs, I'm going to have plus one, or let's let's now say in terms of USD now. On this chart, I have labeled this chart plus one in favor of euro, minus one against USD. You know, this one is saying plus one minus one, GB US plus one minus one, AUD USD plus one minus one, right? This is what NZD USD. NZD USD zero zero. Okay. NZD USD zero zero because the trend is about to change. We're not sure if it will trade, if it will change or it will resume, right? So zero zero. Then this one is plus one minus one in favor of CAD, is it not? This one plus one minus one in favor of CHF. And then this is zero zero again. Now, if we add it up, we would have, would have generated a number for US. Here is minus one, Abi. Yeah. Minus one plus minus one. Minus two, right? Here we become what? Minus three. Is it not? Minus three. Here becomes zero. Nothing. So it's still minus three. Here becomes what? Minus four, right? Here we got minus five, and then this is zero. So the strength of US is what? Minus five. Do you get? I don't need to travel to America to know now that there's something wrong with dollar. Does it make sense? This is my cheat for fundamental analysis. Once I do this, I generate the numbers. And then I know who to trade against and who to trade in favor of. Now let's now look at let's look at all the pairs that are euro. Let's look at euro pairs. What I have from here all the way down to here, here or here, is euro. Okay. So I have all of these uh, USD, right? All of this euro. Then I have GBP. Everybody here is GBP. This is GBP. This is GBP. Then I have GBP here. This is Euro Euro GBP. This is Euro GBP. Okay. All right. So I'm not going to go over all of them. I just want you to understand what we're doing. Now, if you USD minus five, let let's look at the for other guys. This is Euro USD. Plus one for euro, Abi. This is euro GBP. Plus one for euro, right? This is euro AUD. No, this is a. Uh, this is euro JPY. Sorry, this is euro JPY. So euro JPY I have plus one. Then this is euro GBP. Euro GBP is four strength. You see that? When I told Trading. Trading. There are some charts in trends. You remember? Is it 
it does now make sense that PP USD and GDPSD, they are having an uptrend against dollar. Both of them are straight. If you generate the number, you now start seeing something like plus five, plus five. Oh, Euro NZD is up. Clean uptrend. I made a lot of money on. Okay. So now, these are not trends in favor of euro. So we have plus what now? Plus four, Abi. This was the plus one in favor of euro. Plus one again in favor of um, in favor of euro again, and then plus one again, plus one again. That is plus four. Then here, this I, I'm not going to call this a, a, a clean up trend just yet. Okay. Because the market um, looks like it's, it's really struggling. So this is card. This is card. So euro card is zero. Is that okay? Yeah. Now, how do you know or how do you do this mechanically without um, struggling? Look at the 20 moving average. If it starts to get flat, it shows that they are struggling. See here, it's, it's flat, right? It's flat. Here you can see it's, it's steep. It's steep. It's going up. See the 20 moving average going up. Here is flat. Okay. This place, uh, I said plus one because it's still going up. Okay, but here it's still going up. But here it's, it's, it's not getting flat. You won't call this steep, right? So maybe at this point, I would have said yes, plus one, Abby. And we would have enjoyed some of this uptrend. But right now, it's, it's struggling. Is that okay? So we, we are not giving this a plus one to euro. We're leaving it as zero, zero. And then this is euro CHF. Euro CHF, ah, this is still up though. It's up because I'm seeing the trend line is somewhere here. It's broken, but the market looks like it's still resuming. Is that okay? So the only time you are going to say the uptrend has failed is when it breaks. Look at this. And then it starts to maybe generate um, falling tops. Is above it. You mean here on this one? The, the market, look at where the market is now. See the price. So it came down and then it's resuming. Do you get? So that's why I'm saying we won't call this a trading range. Money can be made on the buy side here. A simple question to ask yourself is who is making money on the chart? Buyers or sellers? So buyers are still making money here. So you give the you give the favor of euro. So it means that we have plus five on euro and minus five on USD. Is it not? If you if you don't even know anything in forex and you place a buy a buy stop on euro USD with a decent stop that is a decent stop loss, you make money throughout that week. Throughout that week, although it, it depends on the time frame you are doing this on. This is this is daily time frame. What I do, guys, is over the weekend I will look at the daily time frame. It will daily the bars take time to fall, so it will take some time before most of these things will change. If I try the week, I will just have seven bars, right? From from or no, even five from to Friday. We have how many bars? Just five. So and the the metrics here will not change very fast, right? It will take some weeks to change. So by the weekend, I just look at it. And look at it to observe. You know, if the candles are now meeting, you get.
No. No. On the lower one. If you do your at least small time frame analysis, if you cannot do this on a time frame where you want to place the trade, you get you are using this to check the strength of the call. This is going to distinguish all different types of trade. I told you there are three types of trade: strong trade, healthy trade, and then weak trade. The weak trade is the one where this is a strong trend, right? This, this is a very strong trend. This is also a strong trend, even though it's starting to stall, but it's a strong trend still. This is a strong trend, you can see, right? This is a healthy trend. Can you see? This is healthy. That one, the one I saw somewhere here. Healthy trends are not, see, they are coming down, but when they get to the, an area of, of support or resistance, they will bounce and continue. If you place a 50 moving average on this chart, you will observe that it's respecting the 50 moving average. It's disrespecting, look at it, it's disrespecting the 20 moving average. It's going down below it and coming up. Okay, so when you have a case like this, you know that it will respect a 50 moving average and usually it's also turning every support to resistance. So this is a healthy trend. Now the one that we were struggling with, we will now call that a weak trend. We know that eh, generally the market is going up, but you know, it's not sweet, you know. Something like this, you know. It is an uptrend, but there, there is deep pullback. When the pullback is deep, this, this is a weak trend. This is, buyers are making money here, but I mean, it's not strong. It's not going up, it's not strong. So looking at all of this now, I want to drive home the point because I was trying to teach you about trends. Now I'm driving home the point that there are different types of trends. Okay? Because if we talk about trend now, we're not, now, we're not saying that every time you open a chart, you're going to see a new trend. You will find any of these types of trend. Okay, and then also, I am also showing you here that you can choose the trend yourself. You can choose the trend yourself. You agree with me? I am if you if you do your if you do this on this trend, you are not going to find yourself in trees like this. Guys, I'm six and I'm five. But you're going to now start looking for opportunities with the weak and maybe not so strong, right? If somebody is plus two and the other person is minus seven, it will buy, is it not? Because this one is too weak. If it is plus five, minus five, look at what happened. It, it's buying. If I now, even as it, start, as it is now, as it stands, if I open a chart at this point and this is happening, all I need to do is go to the lower time frame. Maybe this is, this is daily, right? I can go to H1 and look for my trading plan that favors a buy. It will work. Do you understand? You get what I mean? I'm, I'm still looking at my trading plan. But the, the overall picture of the market, I now know, right? I know that Euro is good. I know that USD is in trouble. If I see a reversal setup on USD, I won't take it. Is that right? Because you know USD is weak. But if I see a reversal setup of maybe, you know when we have all these, all these things happening here, and there's a reversal, in favor of euro, will I take it? Yes, I will take it and I will allow it to run. 
When I take my one is to two, I will allow the remaining one to go. Because the big picture is saying that euro is strong. The economy is good. You get you get this, right? This is what I used to make money, a lot of money every month. Every month, guys. It's a very simple technique. The only thing is that I try my best to make my trading strategy very simple. So sometimes this thing takes time. Because you have to open the chart, look at it, write out the numbers, and then you now add them up, right? To take time. That's the only part that takes time. The preparation to trade takes time. The actual trading doesn't take time. Abi, you can place a trade now, now, now. All you just need to do is to know where you want to end up from. So what takes time is waiting for it and preparing for it. What I gave you yesterday is a very simple trading plan. Look for a, a, a bar. Mm -hmm. There are some trading plans that you have to drop Fibonacci, 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 Fibonacci. To take one trade. That's why people risk a lot. If you are seeing many trade setups, you will not bother about it too much. Is it not? The only thing that should take your time is maybe in the morning, at least three times in a week, you open your H4 chart and do this. And then you know who is going to be strong and weak, at least for the next 24 to 48 hours. It will stop you from taking bad trades. And it will increase your chances of success. Does it make sense? Okay. So please put on the light again. Let us finish up something of this. Okay. Okay, so let me let me finish up what we are doing here, right? Provide all the information for a, a decent trading plan. We were saying that in plan, and then we are taking care of this. Remember, this is what you need to be a successful trader. No, no, no. This is okay, Abi. Yeah. Okay, so we said that we need a trading plan. To operate something that is, that is not it's part of the sale. Okay, what I told myself is I make sure I get it. That's where I get my gift. Is what's happening? Where is the banks in their money? That's how you know. All information is there on the chat. I don't need to listen to Donald Trump. Open stage. Now I make my decision. I don't give myself stress. I just trade following the trend. If I'm going against the trend, this guy has signaled a reversal. You see areas where we are struggling to say it's an uptrend. You see those areas. Those are the market is setting up to reverse. You see it on time. And then when these things now arrange themselves like that across all the charts, right? You now begin to see that ah, NZD is breaking out everywhere. Right? It's breaking out everywhere. You spot it on time. You might not trade a reversal, but you're not going to take that trade against NZD anymore to guide you. Do you get? You know that's what I'm trying to say. Because you are seeing NZD is behaving somehow. It's having deep bars. It will guide you. It will guide you a lot. And then it will help you to start the trend early. So now I'm having a bias that okay, it's possible that NZ is trying to buy. If I see a setup that says sell NZ, I'll sell it. 
right? Because if it starts to sell, I mean, we got it somewhere and we're already in profit when people are looking for entry opportunity. If you look back here, you see that that's where this thing started. There are people that got in there. When it started here, it started showing the signals across all the charts. See, like, across all the charts, it was showing you signal that a trend is about to start. The moving average will be broken. If you put a trend line, you see that it has cracked and possibly retested also. Right? So, guys, now um, I just. This is the reason why you see, I don't know do what that is. There's a lot of money to make here. You know what you are doing, you make money here. There's no point going around the whole world. Like I told you, what is feasible with VTC, from what I have seen, is to just buy and hold. Take it as an investment. And you're not taking it as an investment as far uh, I'm going to cash out tomorrow or month end or next month. You are looking at five years. Keep putting money in it. It's an asset. You know what an asset is? To appreciate. As more people continue to adopt it, to appreciate. It's worthless now. But you're going to make up for that amount, the what. You make up for it in time. In five years, hey, I bought BTC when it was 700 per dollar. Go and look at the chart. There was a time when one BTC is seven hundred and fifty-two dollars, not up to one thousand dollars. Now it is what twelve thousand, thirteen thousand dollars. In the next ten years, you think it will be thirteen thousand dollars? It will never be thirteen thousand dollars. Never. Never. In the space of ten years. It has appreciated this month. Keep appreciating. As long as it's an asset class. That's the way they are designed. If only they have patience, that fight is like to pass away, whether you invest or not. Right? What do you do with all these other? I don't have money in a savings account. It doesn't make any common sense. There's something about common sense. There's no common sense me. Why are you putting it Because it's really high. It will drop. I hear that it's more. I buy. Everybody's taking their money and running away. It's now cheap. And I know that in five years, ha, you will want money. You, there are so many things that you can buy for 5,000 Naira now that in five years it will be worth as much as 10 million. I showed you Apple. This iPhone we are all carrying. Apple was worth $10 10 years ago. $10 is how much? Less than 5,000 Naira. Today, it is 118 million. That same 5,000 Naira. That's what I was saying. I need you to get this, to get that thing. And that's the same mindset that you need to trade. You cannot use a mindset of, of wanting to double money and, and then you succeed here. That, that's what differentiates you from a gambler. A gambler wants to make the money immediately. But a trader is a trader. If you go to if you have if you go to China, you take 10 million naira, you go there, you buy goods and fill up containers. This cycle would take you three months from traveling down there, buying the goods, filling up the container, shipping it, coming back to the warehouse, clear it, and then distributing it to your customers. It will take you about three months. And you know how much profit you make? Four million naira. After clearing the container. 
three months, how much profit? How much profit? About 40% or 30% in three months. That's a trader. And that's who you are. So why are you looking for how to double your own money in one week? You get the picture now. You know, so you've got to be patient. There's money to be made, but you have to be patient to pick it up. If you're not patient, you won't pick anything up. You won't make any money. Uh, there's one. You really have to be patient, guys. It's a lot of patience to get that money. Okay, so you need to think long term. That's what we are saying. You need to think long term. Now, what time frames are we going to trade? On that strategy, uh, for the sanity of our minds and then for easy execution, I would recommend that you don't go below a 15 minutes time. Start with 15 minutes. Okay. Why? Because you need enough time to take your stop loss and every other thing. But then um, you can do this on 30 minutes, you can do it on one hour. So if you can set up on 30 minutes, take it on 30 minutes and take your profit on 30 minutes. Is that okay? Don't look for a setup in 15 minutes and then you go and change the charts to. to daily and put your eggs. It won't work. The traders that are trading that market, they are trading based on 15 minutes, right? When the 15 minutes bar gets to one, one is to two, you will start to reverse because they are taking profits. You know? But it won't happen like that for 30 minutes or one hour. Does it make sense? So what I'm saying now is the place where you got your entry is where you get your target. And that's where you manage your trades from. You can do multiple, a lot of people make that mistake. You can do multiple time frame analysis to start, but not when the trade has started. There's nothing wrong with going to H4 and H and daily and all of that to get the higher time frame. Right? There's nothing wrong with that. But don't take an entry on, on 15 minutes and then go to H4 to put your targets. Because before the market gets to H4 target or where you are anticipating, because that base of around that area any form of resistance they are taking profit any measured move they are taking profit all those things will make it an uptrend to go back if that uptrend is resilient it will resume and exceed the previous side and then we say that is an uptrend but in that uptrend amateurs are losing money why because when it was racing up they were buying now there's the pullback, and they can't wait. Pullback continues. He's heading for the 50 MA, he's heading for the 20 MA. And what is happening? They're in red. And what is happening? Margin. Margin is, there is a limit that your broker will allow you to trade. When I said use 2% maximum of three trades, there is a limit. You will never have any issues with margin if you follow that rule. That's another reason why you should follow it. Because if you have more than 3% exposed at any one time and the trade is going against you, you're going to have issues with margin and the broker will start to knock you off. And then you start losing the trade. It's possible that that trade may reverse later. 
but they've knocked you out because your your account balance is not sufficient to to withstand that amount of trade that you were open. That's margin, and then you get margin calls. Okay. So we we'll use that time frame. And then are we using any indicator? Not really, but you can put in the 20 moving average. That's what I use. That's the only thing you find on my charts most times. Yeah, you can put in 50 if you want to, but I realize that I don't even look at the 50 at all. So over time, you just remove, you just went away from the chart. You know, I don't really use it, but it, you can keep it there. Okay. You can keep the 50 moving average. But for the sake of the trading strategy I'm giving to you, uh, let's just have the 20 MA. Okay, so this is, a, this, this is a trading strategy, guys. Let's use 20 moving average. All right, because it can present opportunities to us, or at least it can guide us. Right? Now, what, what will be the entry? What will be the entry? The entry rules. Okay, the entry has to be rules, set of rules that we we'll, that we need to see to place the trade. Okay, now we're going to say that the market would have tested that that support or resistance at least twice, at least twice. Then if it comes there and gives us a shaved bar, we buy. Is it not? That was what we did yesterday, right? Market should come and print a higher high and higher low, right? Then if, what that means is that it's now in an uptrend. That's the definition of an uptrend. Two successive rise, right? Two successive higher highs or higher lows gives you a trend. So we are now saying that when we have defined that there is a trend, let's now look for a just a little you know, something that is technical that will guide us to enter. Is it not? Yes. So we now say, okay, that line becomes an area of interest. All right. So um, the bullet is that we have um, two consecutive uh, swing highs or low. Right, two consecutive, consecutive highs or lows that are in line with the trending line or the trend line. And then definitely, if you have two consecutive highs or lows, you can connect two lines to it, Abi. Then you now anticipate. Okay, so when you see two rising tops or um, falling, falling tops or rising bottoms, you put the line. And then we're waiting for market to come down there again. So you're not going to buy when the market is high. You're waiting for it to come down. That's called discount. That's what you do in real life. That's what you do in real life. You won't buy when it's expensive. You will never buy when it's expensive. But when they put a sticker and say they're on discount, you will, you will now start saying, okay, what is the discount? So we will put the Nigerian discount are not discount. You put discount there, they don't mean that. You enter there, you share all of them. So I begin to ask, Madam, um, you wrote this out on your class, so that's why I keep. Where is the auction? You know, I don't see anything of this out there. Still, there's so much auction. Yeah. In this. Yeah. No. The market. was almost very close. Yes. So it was, it is like, the price was 150 and they accepted it to close it. This is, you can go because Goes wrong with now. Ah, so this is what they find. Come down, but towards the end, they accepted that price at the top. So, and then 
is almost clean. At least the week on the top is not showing you indecision. If they drag, if they drag this market in such a way that this is the week down and this is the week up, this is indecision. You can call this a shape bar, right? Because when the market came up, they, they didn't like the price, they pushed it down. So if you get this, you have to still wait. They are struggling. They are fighting. Bulls and bears. They are fighting. Now, if the next time you now bring this a clean shape back, right? You know, market after doing this, market now came up, you know, and then, am I right? You see that this is bullish. It appears very bullish. Buy, yes, on this. Okay, so we want to see uh, in pictorial form, we want to see something that shows us that there is an uptrend or a downtrend. Okay, so I'm going to open that chart and then we'll do a little back test. A little back test. So you want to see something that, that tells you uh, this is, you know, rising. Okay, so we're starting from here. Now you open your indicator, um, your what you have there, and then you draw the line. Okay, so we have uh, the market gone up, gone down. What makes, take notes, this is very important, take notes. What makes this a valid point is that it led to a high, right? What makes the next one a valid point for us to use it to connect the trend line. I'll teach you how to draw trend lines, how to draw support and resistance. What makes it valid? Because your the market doesn't go straight up or straight down. So you're going to find that you know you have something like this, you know, coming down. And then sometimes you have to struggle with uh, which one do we use, right? Yeah. The right one to use is the one that lets to the Swing high. If if now see what I'm saying. Let's still use this example I have here. Let's say that uh, okay, this one exceeded right. Now I'm not going to connect. I'm not going to connect this line to this plate. Okay, you know why? Because it is this one that gave us the swing high. Swing high, swing low. Swing high, swing low. You will be able to draw. And you look at that line and only use that. So if you want to look at it, so this is one swing here that led to, uh, okay, this is the entire swing. This is not a swing, right? The full swing got to this point. Am I right? And then this, this swing low was here. Is that right? There's something they call a um, zigzag, it's an indicator that will put lines like this on your price. So some people use it. But usually with your eyes, you can spot it. So, but now this is a swing high, this is a swing low. So that's why I'm going to connect this to this. I will. One. And I'll start waiting for price around me. You get so don't make me respect it in future, right? It it. Even though this I just did it myself, but you respect it. It came down and then it's here now. Now, when the market goes up and beats this swing high, the one that beats this swing high is the one I'm looking for to come back and touch the line. Is that okay? There might be. You know, in between, you might have all those intermittent swings and all of that. But eventually, there will be one that will go higher. The market will not, they will not tell you that it has broken the swing high. Professionals take profits there. How much just don't? How much just buy? 
When the market gives you a swing high, see, once it starts to beat this swing high, professional starts to take profit. So as it's going up, it's taking profit. And then, but when you buy stock at this, like saying that you want to buy popular activity. That you come and buy every day. So, who buy? Okay. Who buy? Like after a week, I appreciate you with you, and they are seeing these things with you, and they are ready to help you to get to one is two at. So what I'm saying in essence is, when we have a setup like this, we are waiting for two things, Abi, indecision candle and a shape bar. This is a pictorial form of what we're waiting for. We're looking for something like this, indecision candle. They come in various shapes and sizes. That's why I explained the concept to you. The next thing you want to see, ah, you want to see, take your, take your entry. Okay, most times the market might go up from that point and it will never come back for many, many bars. Many, many bars. You get your one is to two and you get your jara. Sometimes you look at the market, you think that it will go up again. <coughs> We know. You think it has gone up, ah, it has gone too far. It will still keep going. Okay. So, yeah, oops. I don't want you to cram anything. I want to see there are ways. See, I'm taking you directly to the way you trade as a professional. I find it difficult to take people through all the phases. There is something you call mechanical trading, where I tell you, I use oscillators and maybe indicators i'll just tell you when this alarm rings and this alarm rings by that's how that's how you trade mechanically when this the market goes to zero or goes to minus 20 the oscillator goes you sell oscillators there are two types of things you can introduce to your chart they are called oscillators and indicators is, is it anything you call it? So, you know what oscillator is easy Right? Rotate or like a simple pendulum, right? Oscillator. It's a design to tell you that. See, if I put it, if you look at your chart, most of you in default have it by default. You see at the base that they will call this maybe 100 and call this zero, right? And then you see the oscillator will be moving like this. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if you are now, these are some mechanical ways to trade. Some people will tell you to put a 20 moving average on the chart and check your oscillator. The way this thing works is if the price goes up, it will go up. When it gets to 100, it is assumed that it is oversold, it's too expensive. So it should reverse. Am I right? Then when it gets there, they feel that it has gone through too low. It will reverse up. This is a mechanical way of trading. You can just tell yourself that let your rules be that oscillator should get to zero or 20. Right? When oxylator gets to 20 and this thing is here, I want to buy, regardless of anything. You open a buy sell and you take maybe a stop loss based on what we call ATR. If you're on a five minute chart, you take a 10 pip stop loss. You're not calculating anything, you know. You're just telling yourself, okay, five minutes chart, 10 pip stop loss. 15 minutes chart, let's say 15 pip 15 stop loss. One hour chart, 25 pip stop loss. That's what you are trading. And then when the market now moves, when this oscillator goes back to 100, you take your profit. 
That's it. What I just gave you is a trading plan. You guessed. But it's a mechanical way of trading. Yeah. This is I'm showing you. So now, you have something better than this now. What I'm giving you so far is better than this. It's better. That's why I just told you that I'm taking you direct. Okay, the right thing to do is to show you something like this. And then you go home and lose a lot of money. The only sample trade we took yesterday they worked out. Abi, if I wanted to just place a trade out, I just said, okay, let's use oscillators, combine it with indicators. Anything you put at the base here is an oscillator. I don't care the name they give to it. It's an oscillator. Anything you put on the price directly is an indicator. Anything you put on the price is an indicator. Anything you put here at that base there that oscillates between the max and the minimum is an oscillator. So you can make decisions based on the indicator and the oscillator, or just the oscillator, or you know what, what you I'm teaching. What I use is price action. That's what I've been teaching you. Price action, direct. And then we are learning directly what's happening in the candles. These guys don't look at the candles. They don't care about the candle. They don't care about one is to two. They don't do all those things. They just say, okay, it has touched zero or it has touched 20. I will, I will enter. And then it goes up. We didn't make money. Yes, they manage their risk well. Make money. But usually they Strong bars down and strong bars. Railroad track, and then a lot of people make trading plans based on railroad track. Sometimes it's not exactly a goal, okay? Sometimes the green might exceed it a bit, and then you have a pin bar. Abi, do you understand what I mean by this? So you have taken out the red, and then um, you have some green on top of it. So you see a white bar, it is white and black, or a green bar. This is a reversal candle also. Sometimes you see a golfing bar. The red candle comes out, you see it's up the entire red as it didn't exist. It's also a reversal pattern. So some people wait for these reversal patterns around this area of sensitivity. When they see it, they trade it. But what I want you to understand here is that if there is an area where people are waiting for to make a trading decision and there is a shape bar, it shows the result, it shows the presence of those goods. That's what we're trying to say. It might not work all the time, but at least it's showing that these buyers are back here. It can go up a little and reverse, and then you are wrong. Uh, no problem. It happens, right? You take that, and then you okay. So part of our, our rule is that we anticipate the touch. On the trend line, okay, we anticipate a third torch on the trend line, and then uh, what we want to find there, okay, because uh, even though as you begin to you know grow, you will stop waiting for confirmation, 
you get to a point where there are trading strategies that you don't need any confirmation. You, you even trade with limit order. If, I, if I'm placing a trade with limit order, it means that I didn't wait for the candle. I be. I'm telling the market, if you get to this price, trigger my order. So I'm not looking at the candle. Now I'm not trading based on this plan. If you're trading a plan, follow the order and follow everything about that plan. If you're trading another world, don't mix it up. Don't confuse yourself. If you want to do limit order, it's okay. I take limit order on Asian session. On, on, Asian, on, on the Asian session, when the market starts the London session, it will first of all go down and take away all the stops before it starts to run in the right direction. So if I know that Euro is strong and USD is weak, I will go down to the five minutes time frame or maybe 15. And then you know what I will do? I will take a limit mm -hmm. order that says that if there's any pullback down, pick my buy, buy order. Do you get? So I, I'm putting a limit order there at the base of the trading range. So I'm telling the market, and then my stop loss is down. I'm telling the market, if you come low to the base, Asian session always is always tiny, tiny. You have seen them now. You know, you see them on your chart. This is usually how Asian session, it doesn't move. There are some times when it moves because of Australia. They, they have news and other things. It might move, but most of it doesn't move. Now, but if this if this is Euro and USD, it's behaving like this early in the morning because there's nobody to trade. Is it not? They are not traders sitting on their desk to trade. But once London opens, the banks in London, transaction begins. The institutional trader will not just allow this thing to go and start rising. Since euro is stronger than US, it won't go like that. What will happen is that the market will come and then hunt stop. That's what they call it. It hunts stop. So all the people that have put their stop loss here, it will take out all the stops before it starts to resume. Right? Throughout the day. And then you open your chart, you find something like this. Every time. See a week. So what we do, what I do, is I use a limit order. Instead of buying inside here or above here, right? I usually have two open orders. Depends on the one that is triggered. I can take a buy stop, depending on the time when I open my chart. I can take a buy stop to say, okay, take, go, go ahead and just take it off. Or I'll place a limit order and say, if you come down to this price, trigger my buy, you get it. That's the difference between a buy stop and a sell, uh, sell limit or buy limit. Buy limit, but on both cases, I'm buying. But buy limit is, is going to be set here. Say, okay, I know you are up here, but if you come down here, trigger my buy. And then usually my stop will be down, maybe 10, 15 feet below. And then it works out almost every day. Try it. Almost every day. If you have done your CNS, you know the general consensus of the market, you know the strength. Before it will start to move, it will take out stop and go. There are simple ways to make it. So you already that. You look at Don't worry about when you are coming. So just take it slow. For capital. I wish you for capital. First of all, build your skill. Once you are sure that you are trading the right way, have a demo account that has a, a decent track record. You can start from there. Okay. At least when you have proven to yourself that you can do it, you can have a uh, what's it called? You can have you can trade for institutions that will give you money for fans. You can, and then you make cool cash from your house. I have a lot of students that are taking ten thousand dollars account with FTM. For that account, you just give FTM one hundred and seventy dollar, depending on the exchange rate. But they use euro. So you pay them about $170, $180. They give you a $10,000 worth account. And then you pass through two stages, the challenge phase and the verification phase. 
in this phase, what they are asking you for, they said, make 10% profit within a space of one month. Make 10% profit. Don't lose more than 10% within a space of one month. Don't lose more than 10%. And in a day, don't lose more than 5%. You see the rules? That's all. Don't lose more than 5% in a day. Don't lose more than 10%. You know, when you open your trade every day, you take 2%. It means that you can't take 2%. You have to take, or if you take 2%, you can't take more than two trades in a day, right? So that you have some one percent buffer. So you take two percent, two percent, two trades, or one percent in four places, zero point seven five percent, right? Place the trade. Two percent of place the trade. Just do it. You make money there. You make money then You generate more than if you can do it in ten days. You move to the next stage. That's the way they design it. If you do that in 10 days, you move to the next phase. And then in the next phase, the rules are the same. Just that the time now is 60 days. You now have as much as 60 days, but not to make 10%, to make 5%. So they are telling you verify what you did the previous month. Make 5%. Now we're going to give you $10,000 to trade with. So you have 5% to trade in a day, you have 10% to lose in a month, right? So make 5% within a space of 60 days. But if you can finish it in 10 days, we give you the money. Same verification Watching it and give you the money you're able to make at least twenty dollars, twenty percent. When you make twenty percent, that's two thousand dollars. They take thirty percent of that two thousand dollar and give you seventy. If what you made was ten profit. You keep trading more. I'm telling you for real. I have a lot of I'm for real. This I told you that this thing is that you see it. Everyone is going to give you. Size and sit down like this and get to that target in one trade. That's not how to trade. Because I can also sit down there and then lose it immediately, is it not? So, but if you follow this thing now, you're going to make money. As long as this strategy, you are seeing that it works. This strategy I'm giving you works 60% of the time. That's as good as it gets. 60% of the time. And usually you can make as much as one is to two. And then if you do your consensus before taking these trades, you have increased your chance, but I usually don't like to say I have a strategy that is more than 60%. Because every, at every point in time, the market doesn't stay below of mid 60%. Nobody will take the opposite side of the trade. Okay. So, uh, down this route. the next thing is that we want to see a decision. And now, um, an indecision might not clearly be this. If you see an 
decision comes is good. Okay, you can take it. Decision can is telling you, it's telling you that you are so this so That size of that hand. Does it make sense? That's what I observe. Before I give this thing is called a a, a uh, failure swing. The, the high that didn't beat the previous high before it came down and exceeded the low. The previous okay, the previous swing. Right, and then if it does mean usually begins a new to be about of a trend. When it goes out and to reach most times that, that request is a failure swing. Okay. All right. So we want to see an indecision handle and a shape bar. An indecision candle and a shape bar. Okay, now our stop loss is going to be, yeah, of course, this, this is all you need to do. rules, simple rules. The problem is not here. I can do anything. If you want me to speak, let me buy a story. That and free trade max at every point in time. That that is consecutive losing trades to blow that account. So you know where the stop loss is, I mean, stop loss is at the base. Usually, um, you can allow a little room below the big bar or the swing blue. So when I, I say swing blue, what I mean is. When this market tries to resume, you enter, you go in with the pending order to buy, then you are swept with the train. Uh, the swing low, just close to the bar, is where you're entering from. The computers that are taking profit at one institute, they are taking the exact height of that. One tick above the, 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 the signal bar. This is called a signal bar. The, the bar that, that led us to take the entry is the signal bar. It's called the signal bar. And then this other bar that is forming next to it is called the entry bar. The bar next to it is called the entry bar. I like to see a good entry bar. That is another good bar to represent the entry bar. Do you understand? If this is a marubuzu, this is indecision, right? This is marubuzu, shape bar, that gave us the signal, right? That's why we call it signal bar. The next bar is supposed to sweep us into the trade. I like to see that. I don't want to see a bar that is red when we are buying to trick our house, right? But you, you have them, so. 
happen sometimes. So you can you can see that maybe the next bar is being green and going up. The next bar something like this, right? And then and you exit, but then it continues. It happens. So this, this red one here because that's the part that triggers the, the On 15 minutes, before the next bar will fall, you have as much as five, 10 minutes to finish your calculation here for your risk. Okay, so once I finish this now, we're going to now try and perfect the calculator, okay? So that by Mondays, you are placing three. Um, T.ME forward slash CT Forex Pro. That's the group where we're going to stay. So that we stay there together as a fresh group, all right? So we stay there and then we are sharing our training ideas, questions and everything. I told you about it yesterday. Okay, so that's where we will stay. Now, the, the stop loss is one tick below the, uh, the signal bar, Abby, below the signal bar. Is one tick below the signal bar. See, there's something I observed. A lot of people don't make money in the market because instead of you know that I can make money when I when I calculate my risk inside this bar, and the bar starts to go up, I can make money, and then I have extra four percent. Abi. But people don't want that. They want to capture as much as this. Am I right? Yes. Some people are. Some people want to make. Some people want the market to go up and come down. I don't wait for it. I don't like it. You cannot catch my my. You cannot catch me in the full back. Except I have taken a good portion of my money. I'm not talking of a trade that is still, you know, some trade don't start. There. I'm talking of a trade that showed you profit. And then you want to stay in because you want, and then you are anyway. I don't do it in my real account. Okay. The business here is to make money. That's what we are doing all of this for. If, if, if the computers are doing this, I'll follow them. If the computers print the bar, they measure twice the bar and it starts to reverse from that point. I'll follow them. Can I make money? Yes. What I'm going to make up is. Dollar. Is that okay? It's possible for the market to continue. Now, I'm making up in pips, in amount, what I'm getting in pips. Now, what I'm looking for is 50 pips, right? With that $3. The, there is there's something we call traders' equation. You can't have everything, you can't have it all. You have to give up something for the other. If you're looking to take 10, one standard loss, $10, depending on your account anyway, and then you are also looking for pips, 50. Don't make it. I know what I'm saying. Right? What if you're taking, you know, small size, and you're looking for pips, it makes sense. That's what I, I meant when I say capitalize on the movement of the market. The market moves. 
And when you do your CNS, you're going to avoid all those choppy charts. So you will really see yourself in markets that move. So you need small size. In a market that will move, you make money. Big size will kill. Small size can never kill. You have to take an I don't care size. A size that you don't feel. If your size is disturbing you as the market is moving, put it off. You're not trading. It's not supposed to disturb you. As the market is moving, it's not supposed to affect you. Yesterday, when we placed our trade, we all went home. Nobody was disturbed. Am I right? Nobody was disturbed. And then somebody sent me a message and I said, ah, it has hit profit. That's how, it, that's how professional has trade. Let the trade and go your way. Some of you have other things you are doing. Let the trade and go. Some of you are students. Some of you have other things. You place your trade and go away. So these are our rules. And then for trade management, uh, I'm not going to make it complex. I, I, I just told you what I do. I don't, sometimes at one institute, I don't take everything, but I try to keep some part of my money. At least I keep as much as I'm risking. At least. So that I don't move my stock. I don't move my stock, but I have collected that amount I am risking at one to two. Do you, do you get what I just said? I didn't move, I didn't move my stock to break even. My stock is still here where other banks are going to defend it for me. My stock is still there. But when it got to one is to two, I took half. Meaning if I'm trading a um, 0 0.1 lot size, when you go to one is to two, I close 0 0.05. Does it make sense? By so doing, I have protected my 200 Naira. It's now in my account. Do you get it? At one is to two, if you take half, you have protected your, your risk. So now, the trade is still moving. Your stop loss is still open. But you are, you, you are not losing anymore. If it continues, half the size, if it continues in your favor, especially if it's a reversal trade, if it continues in your favor, half the size can lead to a lot of money for you. Sometimes I take slightly above half, just to make sure at the end of the month I have profit. Okay, so but whatever works for you is what you do, right? And then, yes, you go back and do your own research, do your retest, do everything. And then you now start seeing you have your own personal commitment about this. And then this brings me to trading journal. I don't like to preach about trading journal, but I want you to use your common sense. As you start to recognize any trading plan, for example, this, what you do is, if I want my, my map, you see, I have screenshots. I just load them when they are so much, I put them in one folder. As I'm taking my trades, I'm screenshotting. It's almost an impulse. Why? Especially when it's a new strategy that I'm testing. What you're looking for is when you take a screenshot as the trade is starting to build in real time at the right edge of the chart, you screenshot it when you're making that decision. What, what, what happens? Because some people will tell you to make, I don't like to make anything complex. I, I like to live very easy life. When, when some people tell you, do Excel Microsoft sheet, write the price where you enter, right? That's why people don't do it. They make it too complex. Just think, it, the, the, the aim is what we are after. The purpose, what's the reason for doing it? Is to identify the trades that are good, is it not? We need to be able to go back and say, oh, this trade worked out. This is how it was looking when I started, right? It was looking like this when I started. How did I come up with all of this to say, okay, this is it? Because I, I got it over and over and over and over to the point where I said, uh -uh, I'm always observing this. That's what ha starts to happen. As you're learning all these strategies now, you start to see that, oh, this thing is happening over and over. 
Anytime you see a trade that didn't work out well, and you look at the screenshot when, when you started, you might now notice, ah, maybe because this thing didn't touch the line, right? You will notice something. That's the essence of a trading plan. Oh, sorry, trading journal. That's a trading journal. Trading journal should be pictorial. However you want to use it, no problem, but make sure it's pictorial. Some people will tell you to print it out and paste it on your journal, the handwritten journal. You take a picture, paste it on your journal. It's stressful. You can screenshot. Even with your phone, you can take screenshots. After taking screenshots, you can write something. I have all those things. You can write something. This is like this, that is like that. It will guide you, it will help you. That's that you are your own coach. You are the one to train yourself to perfection. And that's that's what the training journal does for you. It helps you to build yourself and to, you know, it will increase your recognition. When you see a setup, you, you don't struggle, right? Okay. So in terms of trade management, guys, uh, just uh, take your profit at what is to do for now. As you start to improve, you can now modify it the way I'm telling you. I am not telling you. Remember I told you what I did or what I do. Again, that is me telling you exactly how it is. There's no point starting you with you know, breast milk. And, you know, it's better we just go straight to what happens in the market. And from there, you start, you start right. Because if I want you to be mechanical, this will not take more than 30 minutes. But we're out of here. But this is a real thing. This is what people spend thousands of dollars to learn, right? And then a lot of time to, to learn. So if you're starting with this from day one, if you don't get it very well, don't criticize yourself. This is a lot to take in. But as you continue to practice, you now see it, you know, manifesting. All right, the guys who will retain are the ones who will eventually be able to execute this. If you do, it will show on your chart. It will show. Okay, we have lots of investors. Lots of investors. And then we manage money for them. And then it is some young boys like you that are on the list. We have about 20 traders. Okay, and some of them are students like this. If you execute this, you make money. I don't care who you are. Girls, they are less arrogant. They don't have needs like guys. They are not under any pressure. Right? They are not under any pressure. Yeah, get, ladies are less arrogant. I know what I'm saying. They are not under any the, the pressure. The ones that have maybe big guys. They are, not, they are not under any pressure to build a house, buy a car, do all those things. For the guys, you look at your age, you know that you have pressure, you have something to meet up with. You start to risk too much. Take unnecessary risk. You are less arrogant. 70% of our traders are ladies. 70%. Most guys don't make it. I know what I'm saying. See this thing, it looks easy. It's difficult to execute. I know what I'm saying. See this 60% you're seeing here. It's a lot to deal with. Greed, impatience, your emotion. I'll talk about all these things. There's a full class for, for psychology. The way we look at all the fears, fear of missing out. You came into the market and the market is already going up. And this thing is somewhere below and you want to get in. Fear of missing out, we call it FOMO. F O M O, fear of missing out. There's also fear of loss. You don't want to lose the money in your account. All this thing comes because you are not doing the right thing. There's a lot to learn from us. Okay, and I won't be able to give you at once, but I promise uh, you will get it all. Okay, because that's the essence of everything. Trade management, I told you, take uh, one is to two of the signal bar. Okay, you can take full closure or partial closure. 
as one is to two of the signal bar. Do not adjust your stops. Just leave your stops where they are. Or you can take full or partial closure as one is to two of the signal bar. Right. Okay, so let's perfect that calculator. Then gather all your questions if you have any, so that uh, maybe after I, I want to do it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Calculator, I told you. Okay, now so we'll see these things on site, okay? Because the market is not open. So we're going to look back at the calculator and look for these indecision candles and look for signal bars. So we just alternate time frame, alternate charts, and then look for them. So you see what you would have done if you were trading in real time. Okay, so when the setup plays out, you see how you, you take it, All right? Okay. So calculator, let's do calculator. Because the, the first thing you have to make sure is that if you are if you're having a 10,000 Naira account, on each trade, you don't lose more than 200 Naira, is it not? It's 2%. So it's the calculator that will tell you what water is to use to prevent you from using or looking. Now, assume that uh, we are trading pro right? You can do this already. Okay, so let's look for one seat now and then take the prices directly. Okay, what's going on? All right, let's just do one or two. The time, time is past today. I will, I will amplify one of the charts. We have put up the light so that we can focus on this. Focus is bad. It's just bad. <laughs> So I'm going to open one chart for us. Then we'll look for we'll look for all these things that we have been talking about since. So let's say that we are using this chart. You can go back or come forward. Okay, let's start from here. Now, this, this, is a, this is a simple example. If the market starts to move in, I can do it from this side, right? From here, and place this straight from here, right? Or I can place from here down. Okay? So you can you can use a trend line to connect. All right, the first the first rule there says that um it shouldn't be less than 15 minutes a bit. So don't go below 15 minutes time frame. Make sure your trading currencies. You need at least two consecutive swing highs or swing low, depending on where you are interested in buying or selling. So there are thousands of opportunities for you to trade. Lots of them. Right? So let's use the broad ones that we can see here. Okay. I'm connecting from this high. Should I use this one? Am I supposed to use this one? Why? Guys, yeah, that's the correct one. You know why? You are, you are seeing the price. That's why you're answering me that question that, that way. That's the correct one to use. Can't you see? This led to this flow, is it not? You can't use this one here. You can't use all these ones. But you can use this one because it led to this low. It came back and then it pushed down. Right? It came back here and pushed down. So, but the only reason why you cannot use this particular one now eh, is because this low did not lead to a new low. Is that okay? You get what I'm saying now? It didn't lead to a new low. So we wait. Wait for more information, right? So we continue to wait. Okay. 
now we have a new loop, right? So we can now connect. Not, not, not this one anymore. What happened there is the market fell and entered the trading range. Is that okay? Market entered the trading range. So this this first line is not useful for trading. This first line is not useful for trading. In work, we'll use another line. So from where we have this swing to this high, okay, we connect like this. That's the high, right? Then we wait. Okay, so we didn't have any opportunity here at all. So you go to the next chart or go to another time frame. Let's use 15. Okay, so here you see that we will have had several opportunities to, to take the trade here. Let's, let's, this is a swing low. Let's start from here and connect to this guy. So, yeah, we can, we can take a trade here, right? This is the first touch, swing low here. Went up, came down, right? We're using this space. Is it not? And then the market comes back. So anytime the market comes back, what you just need to see is something like this. Once the market comes back here, and then there is an indecision can be followed by uh, a marabuzo. You can place the tree. This, this marabuzo is not looking good, right? You're not seeing it. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I will zoom in a little. Okay, so you can see it now. So see what we're saying on the chart. So market touches here once, goes up, comes down. Now once the market comes down here, a lot of traders now find these points to be an important area. The third, the third time, okay, the next bullet there I said, anticipate the third touch on the trend line. It's a simple strategy. If I, if I see this and I know that AUD is strong, I'm going to take this trade without any doubt. Now, do you see that there are some people that, that started to buy early when the market didn't get to the trend line and they lost their money? Do you see it? You see them there? See them? You see it? It didn't touch. So... These guys bought maybe above this, after this, maybe as in decision, and then you have this on uh, as the Marabuzo or whatever, right? Shave bar that goes close to the high for a buy. And then some people take this trade and it didn't work out. So the next one is, let it touch. So this is me showing you. And then this is also you looking at the, the previous, the way the market has behaved in the past. Look at the way the market has behaved in the past. And you make a trading decision based on that. So if I know that this thing has happened like this before, next time, if you didn't touch the chart or the line, rather, I won't take it until it touches the line. Are there times when it will not touch the line and it will move? Yes. But if overall you want to make money, you have to follow your plan. At least let it be that you check all your boxes, then maybe it didn't work out. You are safer that way. So this is going to serve as the indecision. And then this is the next, the next bar is bullish. Okay, it, it has some rejection at the top, but uh it's still going to be our signal bar. Is it not? Why? Because there's an indecision beside it. 
They struggled. After the struggle, that's why I say don't cram anything. Because if I told you cram this particular thing, if you go to the market, you will not take anything. You have seen the indecision. You're not going to buy with the indecision. You're waiting to see the next bar who won. Right? Now, what do we do from this point? We are going to take, take the high of the candle. This is not the high of the candle, no. This place. See the candle's high here. Can you see? That's the high. Is that okay? And then the base. Now, technically, this is the stop loss. Technically, this is the stop loss. Is it not? That's the stop loss, right? Yeah. And usually, you might you might be tempted to put your stop loss here. Okay, but I will advise you to keep it at the base, the recent swing. Okay, just to stay where the big banks are staying. Is that okay? Yes, but if you're calculating your one is to two, it has to be based on the signal bar. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? It means that you're not taking one is to two, you're taking maybe one is to 7.5 or one is to seven, one is to eight, right? Sorry, one is to 1.8 instead of actual one is to two. Okay, so um, these are some of the adjustments that you might make as you continue to you know, trade. So where will our target be? This was what I was telling you about the the um, the computer. I'm not. I don't mean to count the greens. If I just if I this is my cursor. If I take the cursor from here and I drag it down here, I can see that my stop loss is 13 pips, right? Well, I told us to use this screen, so it's 15. The first number you see there is two, right? showing the number of bars that my cursor is accommodating from where I clicked, okay? It's just two bars. If I move like this, you can see it's now 14 bars. You get first number. Then the middle one is showing you the pips, number of pips. But what is displaying includes the pipette. Is that okay? Is that okay? So what, what you're seeing is 155, but I said 15, right? Because the last one is insignificant, almost insignificant. Your currency. Okay, so 15 pips is our stop loss. Now, if I want to take my target, I'll just drag this thing upwards to somewhere around 30 pips, Abi? 30 pips, but I said, let's use the actual one is from here 13. So the target is supposed to be at 26, right? If I have 13 pips um, stop loss, I should have 26 pips target. So what I have around here is my, I have um, 1.09137, okay? So I have 136, 136 is the area of have one, three, six, right? So this is my, this is going to be my entry. This is going to be my stop loss. This is going to be my target. You you place all these orders before you start. Then, of course, you'll be triggered. Look at the next, next body. I this is what I told you sometimes, the next bar might be red, right? Okay, but even after that, the next one now is now moving in that direction. Then you can see all these was still coming back to test that line. Shows you that this is important. If you retest my entry, it means that that entry is important. Right? So what happened? Yes, our target was hit. Did the market reverse from that place? It did, right? It did, significant. So you can start to see what we're saying, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the way computers are programmed. They are programmed to take profit at twice the risk <laughs> of the signal bar. Well, as we move on, I'm going to teach you there's a difference between initial risk and actual risk. The computer take targets, they take target based on 
actual reads and then initial reads. Can't teach you everything at once. We're already behind. I was supposed to leave here by one. It's almost two or more than two. Okay. So I can't teach you everything at once, but you can work with what I'm giving you already and make money. All right. So this is when I did what I said. Okay, you can take like half of the money around here. Okay, so when it gets there, instead of setting the target, I'm setting an alarm. The alarm tells me, okay, the market has gotten to your target. You go out or you close part of it. And then you allow the rest to continue to move, right? You allow the rest to continue to move. Okay, if you have a, a, a good trend, you make more money. If you don't have a good trend, uh, you are stopped. Okay. So let us use these prices to, to test the calculator, and then I think we can call it a day. You can go back home and do a back test. Do a back test like this. Watch it yourself, right? Observe it, you see that that's what happens. Observe it, you see that that's what happens. All right, guys. So the entry price, how many pips is the stop loss? 15, right? When you tell your calculator, I told you there are four informations that you supply the calculator. You tell the calculator it's 13, but we said that the swing low there is 15 pips. You know, the swing low is, you can use 13 if you want, there's nothing wrong with that. But I tried to explain something to you. They are saying I should be giving you everything at once, and then I feel like you're already saturated with what you have. This is this is the this is the actual here's our entry here. Okay. Okay. okay, here, right? This is the signal bar we use, right? There's a week here, it's not showing for you about that. There's a is also here. So that's why I have this slide here. That's what I'm saying. So but we're using this as the actual the initial risk. It depends on your trading strategy, right? What I do is if I trade this, if I play this trade, right? Let's say I'm using my just 15 point something, right? Time, what happens? It has to go up again. Yeah, I think I should 
illegal people. Okay, so let us stop here, right? We will continue on Tuesday. Okay, we are taking Monday out to um, see if we can quickly work on some of the damages at the office. I told that by Tuesday, you can come. Feel free to come in, please, to trade. All right, feel free to come into the office to do your trade. If you have computers, you can come with them. If not, come with your phone. The tensions from your charger. Okay, you sit down there. We open at uh, 10, then we leave around five. So, yes, you can come around, take your space there, and then we do analysis together. Also, and then there will be classes, like I told you, on Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. Right there. Yes, yeah. 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 Everything next week. Okay, see your I'll tell you before now. Yes, yes, yes. And that's it. Just a new one. So I just started this. There's nothing here. You know that you know that when this when the calculator